Okay, so this has the potential to be my favorite podcast episode we have ever done. <laughs> yes. And um, we've referenced this subject matter countless times. So mm. this is like my life work. So mm -hmm. if you read the title and you're like, what the fuck is butterfly plants and spiders? Get excited. <laughs> Get excited. Because <laughs> I'm excited. I actually have a spider outside of my window right now and she's building this beautiful web and she's behind the screen and I can't take a picture of it and it is driving me crazy. Because I had like, a little black and white spider this morning and I was like, oh, hello, Cass. She was on my, like the fr door frame to my front door when I got home from dropping Hayden off at school. And I was like, oh, hello, where Cass. She? Hold on a second. Where was she? On the door frame at the front door. Okay. I had one there yesterday. She was on like the, what left is it? Side. The right side. Oh, mine was on the left side. Ah. She was really pretty black with a little white, um, um, like design on her back. Yeah. Sounds like mine. Mm -hmm. We'll have to compare spider pictures. We'll have to, but I did. I was like, oh, hello, Cass. Good to see you. So this podcast episode is probably going to go along with the one that is being bullied by the universe. Mm -hmm. um, also with a side of money shaker, with a side of processing eight pretty, and probably with a side of, I don't even know what else. Oh. religious spiritual spiritual religious side of things too good good job pulling all of those uh episodes out where we mentioned specific homegirl um, has her spreadsheet in front of her for sure okay. uh yep i have spreadsheet and spirit so that's like kind of my combination of of that ass that is your combination spreadsheet and spirit you need oh, to buy write that, that down. right now write that write down. that down write that down that's gonna okay. be another <laughs> so, another business idea for cass I don't need another business. It seems like if you didn't hear the last episode of Too Many Tinctures, it seems like a little extra if I have another fucking business. Oh. So anyway, back to butterflies, plants, and spiders. Yes. This came from, oh goodness, a conversation we were having about the different levels of where we draw inspiration, where we draw connection, where we draw spiritual guidance from. Mm -hmm. And we have Kaylin, who is way up in the astrals with my daughter and with <laughs> Mama and uh, Mother, Virgin Mary and Mama Teresa and Jesus <laughs> and butterflies and rainbows and unicorns. That's where Kaylin is. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You guys have heard it for 21 consecutive episodes. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's true. You have Jade who is very earth, who can go up or down at any given moment to where Kaylin is or down to where I am and is very more plant related. She literally has vines all over her. She is embodying of the said plant. And also the plants in her house are like the oh, happy. Gorgeous. Absolutely just, gorgeous. You're right. I just made that connection. Like the vines that are tattooed all over my body and the vine, and I like want to grow them all over my house and surrounded by that vines. connection yeah <laughs> your like office area you're literally surrounded by greenery, like thriving greenery not like I know. limping along greenery or <laughs> fake greenery like my house no like these plants are so happy like ones that should be dead won't die because they won't suffer. they won't die and that was not my story guys before I had I've never grown plants in my life until the great awakening of my soul i can grow ugly plants and cactuses and things of that nature i tried to plant a begonia she hated my life like, <laughs> she was like i'm sorry i'm too pretty for you i'm just gonna go ahead and die like <laughs> too pretty for you it's true it's true she was doing well until i brought her into my house but that would be because, Cass, where do you reside? Yeah. I reside way deep down into the earth with cockroaches, bugs, beetles, uh, mama nature, uh, darker spirits, spirits that have not passed over yet, uh, things of that nature. And you mm. thrive there. I do thrive there. I love the earthiness mm -hmm. of it, which is why I physically mm -hmm. am. I cannot wear shoes outside. I'm like, I need mm -hmm. to feel her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we all get our signs. We all get our synchronicities throughout kind of these, these pieces, um, throughout the, through pulling through these, these levels and pulling through these, these areas and these ethers. And really that's where we're coming from as a butterfly plant and spider side of things. So as you just heard, we 
were joking about the fact that I was visiting Kaylin being a spider, but uh, mm-hmm. that's how it happens started. all the time, all the time, I mean, all the time. Be- because of, we've also mentioned Cass and Kaylin speak on astro plane level, like 90% of the time they literally communicate without words. I'm witness to this daily people who are listening. So you need to understand the level we're talking about. They communicate without words. They say the same thing or type the same thing at the same time, at least 10 times a day. And I'm only with them for a portion. They continue on this level after I'm gone and back on, you know, earth, earth side. So Cass can send creatures to Kaylin and you, you only did that, that not so much for me and let, but at the the time you visited, you brought them with you then, but that's a whole different story. So yes, I just wanted, I wanted to kind of create a picture for you listeners to understand that Cass literally sends things to Caitlin to say hello also brings them to though like let's not forget about the time that she was staying at my house we were cooking breakfast in the kitchen and a cockroach just happens to like pop up next to the stove in broad daylight (laughs) while we're while we're making breakfast no big no big I screamed Cass left her body it took a moment for us to come back because she didn't know why I was screaming I mean she probably wanted avocado toast and a jammy egg if we're being honest and so Cass, you should tell the, you know, the, the whole cockroach because cockroaches are fairly new, aren't they? Well, this, sort of, I had a started, cockroach growing up. Fun fact. That's right. So start, so just kind of create that cockroach timeline, just really briefly. <laughs> <laughs> things that I never would have been told or things that I never would have thought would have been said to me. Tell me about your cockroach timeline. Yes. Um, so it all started when I was about 12, 13 ish years old. And as you guys know, I had a pretty chaotic upbringing and, um, I used to go on field trips with school, like everyone else. And my mom literally flipped her shit one day and goes, do not come home from this field trip with a fucking pencil. Like that is what she said before I got on the bus. She's like, uh, she's like, and apparent, I liked pencils. I still fucking like pencils. I have like pens and pencils. Like we just made stationary jokes. So like, it's, ju- it was, it's always been my thing and I'm going to continue it to be my thing. But she's like, do not come home with another fucking pencil. I was like, okay. So she hands me, I think it was like 10 bucks or something like that. Um, and I go on the field trip and I go to the Boston science center and I really wanted a couple of the pencils because they had the really cool big erase, like chunky erasers, like a la like 1990s. And Mm -hmm. I was told no. So I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to get a pencil. So they're like, hi, we have this pet. It's $9 and 98 cents. And it is a Madagascar hissing cockroach. (laughs) And I'm like, fuck yeah. Like this is coming home with me (laughs) because I've always been a little bit of a rebel. I will listen to authority, but I will also make authority kind of my bitch. Absolutely. (laughs) Totally. It's a, it's a nice fine line. And also like, again, for those who are listening, who know human design, I'm a manifester. So I will take things a little bit to the extreme. Sorry, Kaylin. I know your son's going to do the same and Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. already does going to that's cute. (laughs) Yeah. It's going to get worse (laughs) before it gets better. I don't want to think about that. (laughs) So I come home with this cockroach. Um, His name was Fred. It's P-H-R-E-D for those of you guys who are curious. (laughs) I was very specific. I gave him a name tag. He used to hang out with me. Um, Loved Fred. I loved Fred up until Fred was ready to grow and molt. And it literally scared the ever loving shit out of me. Um, The shedding of his skin and the coming out of the exoskeleton really fucking gross. So then after Fred molted, I never touched Fred again. And then my mom says Fred died of natural causes. I think when I moved out of the house, she killed Fred. So still processing that. As one should. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mind you, also like it wasn't a little cockroach. He was like a good, probably four inches. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And also I want to just like highlight the whole, as he molted and grew out of his exoskeleton, that scared you mm-hmm. because that's a whole well, that's another podcast. That's right? funny. That yeah. So, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. skip ahead to 
So I'm going to skip. So cockroaches kind of went away for a while. Yeah. Um, I had an apartment in college because I lived in the the crappiest of crappy areas that had some cockroaches. They never really bothered me. Um, They would be in the wall. So I'd never really see them, but I would hear them. So like, that was kind of like my only relationship with them (laughs) until I went to Costa Rica. (laughs) And um, I stayed at this place and it's like, it's like rated super like high, like five stars. You okay. went to Costa Rica after you saged my house. Oh, yeah, that's true. And one fell from a vent. See, but I didn't think much of that. But yes, you are 100% correct. Mm-hmm. I... That was the start, though, because then after that, I felt like that almost desensitized you a little bit, too, because then yeah. I felt like in Costa Rica, it was just like, Mer. so this is 100% true. Kaylin bought a new house. I mean, a, probably not long after we've met. Mm-mm. And yeah. I went to her house to like sage it and clear it because there was like, it just needed to be, it needed to be started, started new, started mm-hmm. to be fair. We bought it sight unseen mm-hmm. had, and did not see any current photos. The photos that we saw of the inside were four years old and our poor home had been lived in oh, yes. for those four That's years. So hard. we had, yeah, we had to give her a lot of love. Now I feel like she thanks us for what we did for her but it definitely was a process. So it needed cast to come in before we moved our stuff in to like, make sure she was good. Good juju needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I saged and I Palo Santo and I did a whole crystal grid matrix on your house and kind of some divine protection energy work. But when I was in her guest bathroom, which there's pair, oh my gosh, we could do an episode on your guest bathroom and shit I've processed through in your guest bathroom. (laughs) that is gas's space <laughs> i mean last time i was there a kidney stone decided to just randomly pass without pain i was like what the fuck <laughs> but um i'm saging and i'm clearing and i'm uh, pulling all of the energy out of the house and kind of refreshing it and a cockroach just happens to fall out of the like air vent and i was like oh <laughs> shit <laughs> and okay. that was actually the first time i had seen one since fred actually like him come to mind so it had been my cockroach reuniting. I mean, it had been fi- probably 15 years since I was reunited with a cockroach. Because it because you came out of your exoskeleton. And so they got to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so then fast forward to Costa Rica, because that really cemented yes. all of this, I feel yes. like. Oh, yes. 100%. That's where it kind of came full circle. So I get to this place and it's five rated five stars. I've had friends who've stayed there, like great spot. And they're like, there's this place is like known for not having bugs for spraying, for being super clean. And I get to the, the, my room, which is beautiful. And I go to the bathroom and there are three cockroaches up at the top of the shower. And I was like, Oh, cool. I'll call and like, get the, have them remove them. So they remove them. And for, and they were surprised. They were surprised. They were surprised. They're like, we haven't had a cockroach sighting in five years. Like, yeah, the, the, yes, this is true. That's important. Yeah. Correct. They were like, yeah, they're like, we don't have, and then I I started talking to some of the other people on the, on the property. I was like, Hey, have you seen any bugs? They're like, no, it's been super clean. Like, no, I'm like, no cockroaches. They're like, no, no cockroaches. That's like weird. Like we were like, we've seen it. We saw a cricket outside and I'm like, okay, cool. Like not what I'm talking about. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So it happens like the next day I come in, I woke up in the middle of the night actually and had like four in my kitchen. Um, goodness. Then the next that I re- I started putting them in pots and like removing them because I was like, okay, like I can't call down to the front office <laughs> every, every time. time. We'll talk about we'll we'll eventually talk about the spider episode too in Costa Rica, where I did call down to the office every single time because they just kept getting larger. <laughs> but like I would just keep removing them. And like there was no space at the bottom of the door. Like they had the little brush thing, but I was literally watching them somehow get in from the bottom of the door. So lo and behold i'm like okay cool now i'll just keep following the following the path um keep like kind of doing what i'm doing but like also just like be a little bit more hyper aware and a little bit more attuned to kind of like what's going on around me so i think it was the third night i was there or the second night i was there i sat outside and the first night i didn't get a single mosquito bite i every time i go to costa rica i have never gotten bit by a mosquito like i i'm just i'm pretty good about that literally get bit to shit like head to toe like I don't even know how many bites but I was like okay let me go to the local apothecary and swing in and get some sort of bug spray and get some sort of 
like calendula cream, something like that to like help the itch. Cause I'm like one giant ball of itch now. So that's when I got introduced to, cause apparently we're going into psilocybin introduced to the fact that they had psilocybin there. And a part of my path down here was to do a journey and to work with the mushrooms and to work with the, the herbalist there. Um, which again, knowing my background, knowing the fact that I have issues or like family has issues around substances. And I think that there is in my mind, cognitively, not embodimently, I have a hard time separating LSD from like a mushroom or an ayahuasca. Like it's still an out of body experience and out of body substance in my mind, not actually for practice, not what I believe, but like, that's where my Mm -hmm. head automatically goes because of my abuse. (laughs) So long story short, finally decided to work with the mushrooms, decided to do a ceremony with them, put them on my counter. I was like, okay, I'll wait till the next day. And that night, lo and behold, there are four cockroaches fucking sitting around them, looking at them. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you're oh. being driven into the arms of psilocybin. So you could get some via, shit head. via cockroach. Exactly. Via, via roach. Yeah, cockroach. So, um, <laughs> lo and behold, I do it, have a a great experience, you know, really kind of become attuned to, to working with her start kind of like, again, long story short, um, the next day, not a single fucking cockroach the day after not a single fucking cockroach, the like subsequent four days that I'm there, not a single cockroach, not a single mosquito, not a single bug bite. Yep. Nothing. And I'm like, uh, mind you, at that point, I think I had removed like 16 or something cockroaches from my room and like it, uh, so, but did they just all completely disappeared? Weird. Yeah. Weird. Not weird. And it wouldn't be, it maybe if it was a single case, but that's just the cockroach timeline. We have spider timelines for you. Ants. Oh we yeah. Have- we have ant timelines. We have spider timelines. We have yeah. fly timelines. Yeah. So yeah. do not, do, we are not exaggerating when we say that Cass rolls around with the creepy crawlies. They're what all I, there for a reason. What but I do want to pull out the fact though. Oh, hold on. Okay. I do want to pull out the fact though, that like Kaylin is, will be sitting there. Then Kaylin will be like, I was meditating in a beautiful pasture of wildflowers <laughs> and the most beautiful hydrangea colored butterfly landed on my nose. <laughs> Would you like to go down that story? We can talk about it. Yeah. But before we move on to that, something that I have learned from Cass's spider creepy crawly experience. Now, I will say I am the first one still to scream when I see a cockroach. Like, my husband can attest. I can't keep my cool. Because they're big and they're crawly. And especially if they even touch me, like gloves are off all that to say though I can now appreciate the medicine that they bring with them because of Cass Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and please tell us a little bit about the medicine of the cockroach so they're actually even though they're considered to be like in dirty environments and like where kind of nasty things are in filth are they're actually considered to be one of the cleanest insects um basically they take with them when what they bring with them they like actually basically move move shit around to for lack of better term so um the bring with obviously adaptability um they bring with them the strength in numbers and strength in connection uh they're linked with like abundance fertility which is ironic um prosperity Mm -hmm. longevity and like being able to like quote conquer all odds because it is believed that if like a nuclear blast happened and the whole population of the planet disintegrated, cockroaches would still be here. Um, also some cultures, um, particularly in like kind of the, the Southeast South Pacific cultures, um, believe that like when one crosses your path, it's actually a sign of bringing incoming abundance and money. So, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff that comes with them. So (laughs) much medicine, so So much. much medicine with the cockroach. So Though I still find fear when I see them, I am like, all right, thanks, Cass. Appreciate it. Thanks for the medicine. I'll take it. Also, I will say one of the pieces from a medicine standpoint, from like a more not negative, but just like a, hey, you need to work other on this. side. What's that? The other side, the shadow the other side. Exactly. The shadow side is that like, um, considering like a lot of times when you flip on a light or when you turn something on, like they are quick to like scurry and like try to like 
they're not like to having a cockroach when you're making breakfast is not normal like normally they're a night type creature so like yes there's some ties back into that which is like what are you running from what are you hiding from like what are you like what is your shadow side that you're like not willing to look at like what is your toxic behavior like what is your negative belief system and can is how they can come through as well some tough shit tell you what (laughs) it is yeah it's good though i mean i think that 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 subject matter is really important you know it it goes along with everything that we talk about in these podcasts when you get bit by something or stung by something or you keep seeing an animal over and over again look look it up people like there is a reason or get there, you a shaman get you a shaman <laughs> exactly like it isn't coincident it isn't coincidence there's a reason um we're all just energy and animals and plants are here to teach us and so look it up if you're if you are uh, receiving messages over and over again yeah so the butterfly yes the beautiful hyacinthia colored butterfly so i Cass and i have been going through some stuff not interpersonally but just like with the universe together the past seven months um and so one of the downloads that she got is that we had some aka connections that needed to be cut and so she sent me a meditation and she was like you do this one i'll do some on our own and it's like 30 minutes long Um, And she's like, go outside, get grounded while you're doing this meditation. So I'm like, okay, sounds good. So I go outside, I stick my feet in the dirt and I start playing the meditation and doing the repetitions and repeated phrases and cutting the Aka connections and visualizing. And I'm laying there with my, or sitting there with my eyes closed and I look up and this little hydrangea, it looked like a hydrangea flower butterfly is like circling me and then like keeps landing and like shuffling its little wings at me and then circles me and then shuffles its little wings and literally the whole time as I sit there repeating and cutting the aka connections I am like circled by this butterfly and then when I'm done and the meditation is over the butterfly leaves it's like all right we did our work let's go didn't you see the same butterfly though? Yes. Like okay. three days later, maybe. Yeah. And when before. I was down there too, a couple of days later, they fought there here often. Right. Right. Mind you, I had never seen a hydrangea colored butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> like if I see a butterfly, it's a moth. Like, like yes. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out at night. <clears throat> it's a night butterfly. I, love no, it. I do get some, I do. No, I do get some prettier more palatable things for most people like i get a um hawk hawk majestic no. hawk yeah all the time daily hawks birds of prey things that can kill yeah. other people <laughs> yeah 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 okay. and true to my you know earthbound self like i get the gamut as well i got to swim with a manatee last summer for like an hour in the wild. And then the next summer I got stung by a stingray. So it all, it all. See, but I it, think there are things for you, like you, like if, if you could see behind Jade right now, yes, she has plants. Yes. She has vines, but she also has like a piece of a birch tree. Mm-hmm, <laughs> like true. she is so one with like nature, nature and like this, this middle world and this earth. That like, we'll be going out for like, I remember going to your little sacred spot on the the coast and you being like, oh, look, I found this feather and this rock and this, that like, they're just like, and I'm like, I don't see that. I'm like, I found, I think I found, probably found a bug. I think I probably found some sort of beetle, (laughs) but like, you're finding like actual, like gifts from the earth, gifts from Pachamama, gift from mother earth, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like Kaylin is a little bit up there to see, and I'm a little bit too far down to see. (laughs) For sure. No, absolutely. Yeah. So, so we would love to hear from you guys, like what the listeners, what do you see and what What do you, you, yeah. What do you notice? And, um, we promise there's something that's being given to you, right? We all are being given messages. We don't all just choose to, to pay attention. So 
And then yeah. I would also love like, well, also not only what do you see, but like, do you relate more to the butterfly beauty of Kaylin, the groundedness of Jade or the earthy dirtiness of me? <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs>